Okay, so maybe you've watched my videos so far about n-grams and Markov chains and that sort of thing, and you're thinking, what? What's the next step for you? What could you possibly make? So on the one hand, I think the assignment or the exercise for this week, it's really legitimate to not program anything new. In fact, a lot of using a Markov chain to generate text is about two things outside of the actual algorithm itself. Number one, it's what source text are you picking and why are you picking that source text? And number two is what are you presenting to uh, of uh, a reader, a viewer, a user, an audience, and what medium are you presenting it in? Are you using a Markov chain to generate dialogue for a performance? Are you using a Markov chain to generate tweets? Are you recreating you know, news articles and it, the project about designing a news-like website that looks like real news, but actually it's Markov-generated news? There are a lot of possibilities there. Using a Markov chain to generate text is not really a novel idea at all, and you'll see, I'll try to link in this video's description to lots of existing projects that use this technique that you can also find for experimentation. Now, here's the thing though, I have some additional examples that, you know, the videos that I made that you, if you watched the Markov chain video previously, I'm just implementing the sort of raw algorithm and doing this kind of simple, not simple, but doing this sort of basic implementation of it. So one thing I wanna do, and that's this example that's trying to generate Coderful code in bows. That's kind of awesome. Fifth man's raying shift. So you can see there's some new names that I'm trying to think of for this channel. Now, um, I do have some pre made examples that if you go to the link ex to the A to Z uh, GitHub repository, you'll see. So I want to highlight some of these. Number one, and these are, uh, by the way, this is a Markov chain example that does something much like my YouTube channel naming, and it just takes naming of names of lots of media art programs and uh, creates a name. So let's see if we get anything good. Sently program in arts and media arts and code. Media arts prograded technologies program. Uh, creations in entrepreneurship. Anti-disciplinative technology program. Set technology people. Uh, so you can see computer action. That's pretty great. So you can see this is the kind of thing for, for naming. You can also look at my second example and try to find the differences, right, between generating short text this reads Mary Shelley's Frankenstein from Project Gutenberg and generates kind of an actual very, very long text with paragraphs and everything written in the quote unquote style, which isn't exactly accurate, but uses a Markov chain to generate a new text. So you might look at those and look at the difference between short text and long text. Both of those examples are generating text on the character by character basis. So when I say a trigram, I mean a collection of th a sequence, a contiguous sequence of three characters and three characters. But you can also do this by word. So you can consider the tokens not as individual characters but as words. A rainbow is, rainbow is a, is a meteorological. So this is an example that instead of using sequences of characters, using sequences of words, and you can see the result here in a primary rainbow with inverse order of its colors reversed. So um, at some point, I could go back and do another coding challenge to implement it by word if people are interested in that. But right now, I might just refer you to this code example. Another thing you might think about is what are other tokens or things that happen in sequence in text? For example, this text is not just this sequence of characters or this sequence of words. It's actually a sequence of parts of speech. Verb, noun, noun, verb, determinant, adjective, adverb, I'm getting that in the wrong order. But what this actually does is evaluate the contiguous sequence of parts of speech, use a Markov chain to, chain to generate a sequence of parts of speech, and then pick words that are parts of that parts of speech to generate the text. And the result here you can see is the observer, it reaches the meteorological set, the raised section, in a section and 40 to 42 degrees percent or more in the system between an arc and 50 percent, et cetera, et cetera. So you can take a look at that example as well. Another thing you might think about is mixing two texts within a Markov chain, right? What if I generate, this uses, if I take this slider all the way over here, this is generating text using a Markov chain only from Midsummer Night's Dream. This is now generating text only from my Nature of Code book. And now if I kind of put it like over here, let's see if we can generate something good. Uh, that's a little bit too Shakespearean. Um, uh, let's, let's, let's give it a little more nature of code. Uh, do it again. Unto his point numbers, rather voice virgins when program, how do I knowledge about that? We add one. We can be the mouse location. Strong prevailment of the true for both X's. And dispose of zero, zero. We still of this kind wanting. But how to my conside of length one? Then have our motion the close to your youth to one. 
OK, anyway, I got a little too caught up in like pretending I'm like acting Shakespeare with my Markov chain. But anyway, so you can see that's something you might think about. What if you're mixing two texts, three texts? How do you adjust the probabilities? I'll give you a little hint behind the scenes. If the probability, if I want the probability of the Shakespeare text to be higher, I just feed the Shakespeare text in multiple times. Again, it's not the most efficient way of doing this, but it works. You can think about other ways that you might do that. Um, um, you can get, you can use a Google Sheet. I have a Mad Libs generator that pulls data from a Google Sheet. You could do the same thing with a markup chain. Uh, you could pull from an API. I have an example that pulls from Reddit. Um, and then also, I should mention, of course, that. Even though I'm using my own Markov generated code based on code written in Python by Allison Parrish, um, you could also use the Rita library, which has a Markov generator built into it. And I have a previous video that I should link to in this description all about the Rita library and encourage you to look at that and see its implementation. Um, so um, these are things that you could think about. I made a little list here also that I'll reference. Um, so on the one hand, just generate what's your own existing text. What's your own, what's, what's the order you're picking? How are you presenting it? Um, you could think about just sort of visualizing the frequencies or the, the, the possible pathways. Uh, this web trigrams by Chris Harrison is a project I reference. You can see this visualization of those, uh, of those n-grams is something you might think about. Um, and then I talked about mashing up two texts. The Gnoetry project is another useful reference that I'll have a link to. And then the other thing that I think is really important to mention is even though this course and this set of videos are, I'm focusing on this idea of text, and the characters are words being states, and this continuous sequence of states, this Markov chain, you, the units of the Markov chain don't have to be text. What if they are musical notes, or rhythms, or colors, or uh, vectors? What other types of visual designs, or sounds, or music could you generate through a Markov chain. So I hope you will think about making something with this. Uh, you can share it with me at Schiffman on Twitter. You can share it in the comments here. You can also uh, subscribe to this channel's Patreon. There's a link in the video's description if you would like to make a financial contribution. Of course, that's optional. But with that, you can get membership to a Slack channel where you can also share your assignments and get feedback from a community of folks in the Slack channel. So thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing what you make from this and look forward to seeing you. I don't actually see anybody when I'm doing this. I'm just staring at a camera, but it feels like I am. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Okay, bye-bye.